And the next speaker we have is Pu Pubudu from um, WSO2. Um, I'd like to invite him to the stage. Hello, Pubudu. Okay. Hi, Julia. Um, okay. Pubudu is going to talk to us about productizing your microservices as an API product. Over to you, Pubudu. Thank you, Julia. So let me share my screen. I think you can see it, right? Yes, thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, so this session is about uh, productizing your microservices as API products. I am Kubudu Gunatilika. I'm a technical lead at WSO2. I'm basically the part of the API manager team working on Kubernetes and service mesh technology. So I have experience with uh, working with the customers and building, coming up with solutions. So let's see today's uh, lineup. So first I'll be covering uh, microservices use case. Let's get a microservice use case and deploy the set of microservice in a service mesh. And then let's look at why we need an uh, API my, API gateway, then how we basically position an API gateway in a service mesh. And then we'll discuss the coexistence of service mesh and API management. And then we can discuss about the API gateway deployment patterns. And next we'll look at how we transform existing microservices as API products basically how you productize your microservices then we will be focusing on api marketplace that's where for the any external developer or the app developer to come and discover your microservices or uh, your apis and then i'll be give you a brief introduction to a cloud native api architecture and this will help you to build a enterprise solution and finally, I'll be looking at the what are the available options, like how you utilize the Kubernetes ecosystem and take the maximum uh, from the Kubernetes uh, ecosystem. Okay, so let's uh, look at this uh, right application. It's like a taxi app. So there are a set of microservices for this right application. Uh, one is passenger management, another one is driver management, payment, notification, trip management. So the names of these microservices uh, speak itself. So you get an idea like how, what you basically need to come up with when you are developing an application in the microservices architecture. Now, if you deploy these set of microservices in a service mesh, this is how it will look like. So basically the uh, sidecar proxies will be fronting these each of the microservices. And then the mesh control plane basically controls the proxies and it will be basically applying different, different policies such as security, rate limiting, and um, different, different type of uh, maybe uh, mediation. And then uh, even traffic routing uh, policies as well. So this is how you look like in a service mesh when you deploy a uh, set of microservices in a service mesh. So now we need to expose these set of microservices to the outside world. Now, when we are doing that, we have to focus on several aspects. We have to apply policies such as security, rate limiting, mediation, if you check on the security, you have to basically authenticate the user, then authorize the user, and uh, authorization is in the sense like you have to make sure whether the authenticated user has particular access to particular resource. And even you have to do the protection against malicious payloads. So the malicious uh, payloads are basically used by the attackers to harm your microservices or your APIs. They could be doing a DDoS attack or maybe stealing your data or even 
maybe uh, like manipulating your data. So we have to make sure when you are exposing that our microservices are not vulnerable, they will perform uh, as we expect. So that's about the security aspect. So I have listed down uh, several things, but there are, we have to handle the cores uh, likewise. So if you look at the rate limiting, we have to limit the number of requests that is coming to your microservices. That is some way like protecting your microservices from attackers and so on. And even you have to do some mediations for your microservices. It could be a simple mediation or it could be a complex mediation. So let's assume like you have a service chaining example and then you have to basically uh, uh, like uh, get the full response from two different response you receive from two different microservices. So in there, you have to basically do some mediation and come up with the single response to the client. So these are the things basically you will be have to focus when applying on different different policies. And if you look at the data masking and data reduction, so there are cases like for if you consider profile information, we cannot share profile information with all the users. You have to, uh, maybe you share less information with low privilege users while you share uh, the entire profile information with that means so high, high privilege users. So these are the things that you will have to uh, cope with. And once you develop set of microservices, you have to let your internal teams or maybe your outside teams to discover and use your microservices. So you need to have kind of a way to share your microservices with them. And next thing is about the business analytics. So once you have doing like deploying set of microservices, some set of microservices will receive low traffic while some receives higher load of traffic. So based on the usage patterns of these microservices, you have to understand how you basically evolve your business and what are the decisions you have to take based on the uh, business analytics you see in your dashboard. So this is a key things how you basically align your set of microservices and develop a business that is growing day by day. And finally, you have to not only focus on deploying, you have to make sure like how you basically troubleshoot your microservices. That's where you need to focus on monitoring, observability, tracing, and things like that. So these are the things you will basically have to deal with when you are exposing your microservices. Now, if you look at the API gateways today, what we see is that all of these capabilities are there in the API gateways. You can do a, a simple mediation or even you can and apply policies, security, rate limiting, things like that. And now how we position the API gateway into an existing service mesh is you can basically let the API gateways handle the incoming traffic. So the request will first come to the API gateway, then from there, it will go to respective proxies. So the mesh control pane basically controls the proxies while the API manager control pane basically controls the API gateway. So that's how we basically fit this API management and service mesh. So there were discussions when service measures are coming up, whether the API management is dying. So basically people thought like uh, the proxies are having the same set of capabilities, but uh, similar to what API gateways are having. So, but uh, there are se this separation of concerns. So even in the Nilesh talk, this was discussed like the basically the uh, proxies uh, 
basically handles the east-west traffic while the API gateways handles north-south traffic. So uh, the, this is some set of uh, ways how you align these API uh, manager, like the API management plus service mesh. So this is one thing. And if you look at the big picture here, if you compare the service mesh and the API management, so in here, what I call API management is not just API gateways, but API publisher, API developer portal, API key manager, and traffic manager, and basically the entire API management ecosystem. So if you look at the service mesh only, what you will be getting is the resiliency and observability. So the, in the common ground, what you will be having is security rate limiting and traffic routing and things like that and if you look at the api management aspect now if you, so who are you familiar with the api management knows that the api management has a in like a rich developer ecosystem basically you can manage your api lifecycle you can apply workflows for your apis and you can do monetization and billing and API documentation. You can give your uh, consumers SDKs and you can do the subscription, mediation policies, and even do the fine grain access control via scopes or even from SAPML policies. So these are the things what you will be basically getting when you are having API management only. And what the magic here is that once you have a, both the service mesh and API management in one single picture, you get the benefits from both of these components. So you can basically be, build an enterprise solution based on the service mesh and API management. So I'll, I'll be basically touching um, reference architecture on this. So then you get a more idea on it. Okay, so let's uh, look at the API gateway deployment patterns. So there are several deployment patterns in here. So the first thing is uh, private chat mode. And uh, basically in private chat mode, uh, you will be having different, different ports. So if you take the Kubernetes environment, the port con concept is that in a one single pod, you can have one or more containers. So in the private chat mode, what will happen is you have a one single micro gateway pod um, that contains one API and you have the other microservices running separately. Now, once you scale your pods or when you are scaling, basically, you scale your micro gateways separately and while you are scaling your microservices separately. So the idea here is that it will help you to, maybe you are getting higher traffic for the micro gateway, then you can basically uh, auto scale your micro gateways while you keep your microservices as it is. So that's about the private chat mode. And the next option is the sidecar mode. So this is what basically the service measures are being used. And sidecar mode, you'll be having two containers in one pod. So in the first container is about the micro gateway container, and the second one is the microservice container. In a pod, basically you have the same network and the micro gateway to service container, it's like a, just a local host, local call. So the key factor in here is like when you want to scale a micro gateway along with the microservice uh, container based on your use case, like maybe you don't have a use case to scale them at the same time, then this is the best option you can use. And next mode is about shared mode. In shared mode, uh, what you'll be having is basically one single micro gateway that has 
several API. So all the previous cases, what we had is a single API in a one single micro gateway, but in the shared mode, basically it acts as a centralized API gateway. So in the microservices are running separately. So even when you scale it, you basically scaling your APIs that are available in the micro gateway. So that's how we position API gateway into different different patterns and you can use any of these patterns when you are applying or when you are uh, building a solution in a service mesh plus API management system. Okay, let's look at how we can transform microservices as API products. So there are two options. Basically, you can start from a SAGA definition or open API definition, or even you can start from the API publisher. So let me go in detail in the SAGA first approach. So let's assume you have deployed several microservices and they are running in a service mesh. Now, you can basically create or generate a Saga definition for the microservices. There are tools that generate uh, Saga definitions once you provide necessary information. Now, the generated Saga definition, you can give this definition to the Kubernetes and say, deploy a API gateway, like the API micro gateway in Kubernetes. Once it is being done, you can basically give the same server definition to the API publisher to import an API in the API publisher. And then you can basically productize your API there by giving API documentation. You can add a thumbnail to your API, or maybe you can give owner details, technical details, and things like that. So, you basically productize your API and then publish the API. So once you publish the API, that will be available in the developer portal. So that's where the external consumers consume that API. So uh, this uh, second section about deploying an API gateway in Kubernetes by just giving a saga definition to Kubernetes. So we have this operator called API operator for Kubernetes. In there, what you need to do is just give a saga definition to Kubernetes, and then it will just bring up an API gateway for your microservices. And let's move on to the next uh, one, like how you start from the API publisher. So even in this case also, you just have to have deploy your, your set of microservices in a service mesh, and then you come to the API publisher in the API manager, and you basically give the API name, context, version, and you create an API. And then again, you can basically productize your API by adding documentation, adding uh, business owner details, technical information and things like that. And then you deploy this API in a Kubernetes environment and it will basically bring up a new API gateway in Kubernetes. So once the API is published in the API, uh, from the API publisher, it will be available in the developer portal. So these are the things like, these are the two options Either you start from the Saga file or you start from the publisher and basically create or like you transform your microservice as a managed API in a, in a Kubernetes world. So uh, I think uh, we'll be having a workshop tomorrow to cover up these sections. I think you can get more an idea how this is been happening underlined. So we'll be covering how you start from a saga definition and how you start from the API publisher. So uh, you can check it out there. Okay, so let's look at the API marketplace. Now, once you have created a set of microservices and then you expose a set of APIs, you want your 
external consumers or maybe your internal teams to discover this API and create their APIs. They may be coming up with different, different APIs for their application. So this is the place they can come and discover the APIs. So what you will be getting at is like, you will be able to get the documentation for the API. You can generate basically the SDKs for your APIs and so on. So these are the value additions you will be getting when you are having an API marketplace for your microservices once you productize your microservices. Now, the next thing is about the business insights for your microservices. So as I explained earlier, like once you are deployed set of microservices, you have to make sure how these microservices are functioning. There can be higher volume traffic microservices while you have low traffic microservices. So I think you have to focus more towards uh, the higher volume microservices and give them more resources and let them scale and make sure you have zero downtime for those microservices. While the other low level microservices, low traffic microservices, you have to, maybe you can couple set of these microservices and focus towards that. So these are the set of things like based on the usage patterns, we can decide how we want to uh, run the business in next six months or run the business in next five years. Likewise, we can get some business insights of the microservices. Okay, let's look at the cloud native API architecture. So all the things I explained earlier comes basically this is a wrap up in this API architecture level. So if you start from the right hand side, so uh, in the top we have the data plane. So in the right hand side, you have the microservices with the proxies and then you have the micro gateways and then you have the ingress gateway and that's where the basically the API consumer consumes APIs. So the ingress gateway could be another API micro gateway or then API gateway. So the API consumer comes via the ingress gateway and based on the context, it will route to different micro gateways and then it will from micro gateways, it will come to different different proxies. So that's about the data plane. Now, if we look at the data plane, this data plane is controlled by two different like uh, control planes. So the mesh control plane basically controls the proxies in that are attached to the microservices. While the API manager control planes basically controls the API micro gateways uh, that are in the data plane. So in the control plane of API manager, you have the traffic manager. That's basically do the traffic management or the rate limiting for the micro gateways. While you have the API key manager, that's basically issuing access token and validating access token. If you take JWT tokens, basically the API gateways can validate itself as JWT tokens are self-contained access tokens. But there are cases like we are be using third party key managers and things like that. And that's about the control planes. And if we are moving to the management plane, in the management plane, you have the API publisher. That's where the API publisher come and create APIs. And then you have the developer portal, that's where the app developer come and discover your APIs. And then we have the API analytics, that's where the business user or maybe the API publisher come and get the business insights for their microservices or for the APIs. So now if we just recap what we have focused today, like we 
deploying set of microservices and then when we are exposing set of microservices to outside we have to focus on several things like uh, policy attachments and uh, api marketplaces like to discover your microservices and for everything will be gathered in this architecture where this will be helpful to come up with the enterprise solution for the uh, coming eras okay so let's look at the utilizing kubernetes ecosystem now if you look at the kubernetes ecosystem now it's been adding features different different which will help us to manage and deploy our application so one thing we can focus is auto scaling api gateways and backend services so this could be done based on the cpu or memory or even this could be done with the custom metrics such as request per minute or even the based on the error rates and other option is that you can do the zero downtime rolling updates now it could be you are migrating from one version to the latest version or maybe you are applying patches so these are the things we can basically utilize and these are the things we can basically use in a kubernetes world while make our lives easier and we can also do the canal deployments where your traffic management traffic uh, will be incrementally coming to the latest version and you have the end-to-end -end fully automation capabilities with the kubernetes uh, by using the kubernetes ecosystem as well so these are the set of things that you will be getting at when you are focusing on the kubernetes ecosystem and build a solution on top of uh, kubernetes or a cloud native environment okay so i think uh, we can move to the questions thank you Prabhu. that was really great talk um i've got a question from the vindra um, would you not agree that mediation in the microservice context should be avoided as far as possible? Yeah, so I, I think uh, that's something uh, uh, for the discussion. Like there can be cases like you need to add some simple mediation, but that's where it comes in handy. That's where the API gateways comes in handy, where you can give the, that mediation to the API gateway and gateway itself can handle the mediation. So you just don't need to worry on that. I guess it's a case by case basis really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, actually yeah. that's it. So um, what, what are some of the challenges or issues that you have seen where companies have built uh, their public microservices, perhaps they are the sensitive data that we might have to deal with, or is it security? Perhaps some to have to deal with the text when they go public with their APIs. What What are some of the main challenges that you have seen? Yeah. So uh, when so they like uh, there are cases like people don't want to run their microservices in a cloud environment. They want to go for uh, on prem uh, uh, infrastructure basically because they don't like to go with the cloud and because it basically we don't know like there can be uh, attacks coming up so so if you take the bank sector like they are pretty much going for a on-prem deployment and utilizing there so one thing to note down here is that we with the these capabilities what you can do is you can run the control plane basically in the cloud while you are running your data plane in your on-prem environment. So it's like a hybrid approach. So these are the things we can focus when we are building a solution. So th that's one thing. And I think uh, other challenge is that uh, the, I think when you're coming up with APIs, you have to 
have a mechanism for uh, your API developers, like the app developers, to identify what are the uh, APIs that are there and how you basically combine these set of APIs. So that is where the API products comes in. So these are the things people are more looking at. So when you are coming up with a real world example, you get these issues. So, so the things are still evolving. And I think the, the coming, we, coming years, this will be like people will focus more towards that. Awesome. Well, that's all the time we have today. Thank you very much, Pururu, for the great talk. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. And that, that's also all we have today on the platform stream. I hope you have enjoyed all the great talks we have today.